My name's Alistair McConaughey. This is the regular roundup of the news from A Force for Good. <laughs> A couple of things that we want to get to in this program. I want to give you some comments on Theresa May's latest statement. And I want to speak about an article here by Alex Rowley, Deputy Leader of Scottish Labour. But before I get to that, let's speak about something that happened in Edinburgh last week on Wednesday the 28th of September 2016. We were pleased to see some of the members of Team GB, those who live in the part of Great Britain known as Scotland, returning to a modest but colourful homecoming in Festival Square in Edinburgh. We say fairly modest, but it was certainly better than the nothing which the SNP had hoped for and indeed had planned for. For example, back in 2012, when the Olympians came back to George Square in Glasgow, a big public event had been arranged and there was between two and three thousand people there, about two and a half thousand people. I was one of them. And let me say it was a very very British event. There was a lot of Union Jack flag waving, a lot of cheering, and indeed when Alex Salmon stood up to speak he was booed, which was extremely satisfying to those of us in the audience who were not his greatest fans. However, the Scottish Government undoubtedly learned a lesson from that particular event and probably vowed to ensure that it never happened again. So this year the Scottish so-called Government got their Quango Sports Scotland to arrange a behind closed doors event which was invite only inside a sports centre out in the sticks outside Edinburgh in Heriot Watt campus. And it was very staged and indeed it had to be staged if Nicola Sturgeon were to stand up and address the Olympians without having to do so in a sea of Union Jacks and booing. So Sports Scotland arranged that uh, basically on the sly. However, some of us got to hear about it and we kicked up a little bit of a fuss, certainly on our Facebook site, facebook.com UK, a force for good. We spoke about this the evening news in Edinburgh picked it up and also created a bit of a stir about the fact that the public was essentially being excluded from what could have been a big and happy event. Let's just backtrack and consider Harriet Watt University for a moment because there's something that I want to say about that. You know, Harriet Watt University is the only university in the whole of the UK that actually hosts a monument to Alex Salmon's ego in the form of a, a large rock that's placed in its campus on which is engraved into the rock some asinine comment from Alex Salmon about tuition fees. Now I ask you, I'm not knocking the people who work there or who study there but I am addressing these comments to the corporate body that is Harry Watt University. You know, how low do you have to prostrate yourself, indeed prostitute yourself, to put up a monument on your campus to Alex Salmon's ego? That's pretty low. That's pretty low. And I would ask you to think again. It's been up there since November 2014. We've seen enough of it. Here's a picture of me laughing at it and indeed the whole world is laughing at the corporate body that is Harriet Watt University when it sees things like that in your campus. So get that sorted out. Anyway back to back to Wednesday the 28th. After the evening news and ourselves at A Force for Good publicised the fact that it was going to be behind closed doors. Scot Sports Scotland did relent and they did organise at the very last minute a public event. 
So that was something. But it was at the very last minute, very few people knew that it was on. It was at three o'clock on the Wednesday afternoon, so it was before people came out of work and it was while children were still at school. So there were only a few hundred people at it, but nevertheless, everybody who was there appears to have had a good time. There was a lot of Union Jack flag waving again. Thankfully, there were no Scottish so-called ministers giving us the misfortune of their opinion. So, in other words, it was an excellent uh, small event and it was good to see. It was good to see, but it could have been so much bigger if Sports Scotland had made more of a deal of it and put it on at a later time in the afternoon. Now, I say all of that to say this. You know, the SNP wants to remove from Scotland all symbols of Britishness, whether that's in the cultural sphere, whether it's in the sporting realm, or whether it is institutional. And this includes removing Team GB from public consciousness. This includes locking, quite literally, Team GB behind closed doors. Because out of sight means out of mind, and out of mind means that it's much easier to destroy. And that's the agenda that the SNP is constantly working to. You know, if you vote for the SNP, you're not just voting for them to make the buses run on time. You're voting for their cultural cleansing agenda. And that cultural cleansing agenda is very damaging to our sense of British identity. The SNP thought they got away with it when they tried to downplay the Olympian homecoming. Thankfully, they didn't quite get away with it. But we're on to them, we're watching them. And whenever we see them doing things like that again, we'll try to bring it to your attention through our Facebook page, through our Twitter account, through our website, aforceforgood.org.uk, and through this regular broadcast. Hey, what I want to talk about now is Theresa May's comments about Brexit. Regardless of what you think about whether the UK should be in or out of the EU, and regardless of what you think about the Tory party, I want to give you some comments about her speech here, which has been quoted on the front page of the Herald, Monday, the October the 3rd, 2016. She's addressing her comments here to everybody, but especially one particular lady who exercises a prominent role in politics in Scotland. Theresa May says, but the job of negotiating our new relationship is the job of the government, and by government she means the British government. The proper government, not the so-called Scottish government, which is in fact an executive arm of the British government. That's an important way to understand the relationship. It's hierarchical and it's vertical. British government, Scottish executive, Welsh and Northern Irish executives. It's not horizontal. They're not equal governments by any stretch of the imagination. Anyway, back to Theresa. Because we voted in the referendum as one United Kingdom, we will negotiate as one United Kingdom and we will leave the European Union as one United Kingdom. There is no opt-out from Brexit. And I hope you're listening, Nicola Sturgeon, I add. And I like this bit. And I will never allow divisive nationalists to undermine the precious union. Fantastic, as you told Miss Sturgeon. Think on those words and ponder them. 
So that's Theresa May standing strong there. And that's so good to hear because there's far too many so-called unionists in Scotland who say that we should try to keep the nationalists happy. We should try to treat them with kid gloves because if we stand up to them and try to block their way in any shape or form, then you're only going to make things worse. No, that's not how politics works at all. You have to stand up for what you believe in and your opposition will respect you for that. And there are so many people in Scotland who are crying out for strong unionist, pro-UK leadership. And we don't care where that leadership comes from. We don't care if it's an English woman. We don't care if it's an Irish woman. We don't care if it's a Welsh man. We don't care if it's a Scots woman. We don't care where in our United Kingdom that voice is coming from, but we want to hear it. And we want to hear people standing up strongly for the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And that sort of language does that. It's not merely mouthed. It's not in awe of. It's not subservient to the nationalists. It stands up for who we are and for what we believe. So that's some strong words. And let us hope that she backs those up. Now, unfortunately, to some rather weaker words. And I'm not a member of any political party. I'm not criticizing or speaking for Labour or Conservatives or Lib Dems or any party in particular when I give credit where credit is due, for example, to Theresa May, Theresa May, and where I criticise, as in this case, Alex Rowley, the deputy leader of Scottish Labour, who writes in the Press and Journal of Thursday, September the 29th, 2016, when he says, it's all about Brexit, don't get distracted by independence. It's a good headline. It's a good headline. Unfortunately, what he says is not so good. What he says is much more... Um, flake here. It's not the consequence of careful, determined thought. Let me just read to you his opening paragraph and then I'll take it word by word. In post-Brexit Scotland there is a real opportunity to set a new vision okay. and new settlement more akin to home rule in the UK, more like a federal union that is part of a revised UK constitutional settlement while retaining the best aspects of a positive relationship with Europe. Well, so much crammed into that one paragraph. Where to begin? Let's begin with the word settlement, which he seems to like so much that he said it twice. And by settlement, the Labour Party especially, but also the Tories and the Lib Dems, they seem to think, when they use that, that it makes the political situation settled just because they've said it, when the fact of the matter is the reality, is there's nothing more unsettling than devolution. There is nothing more unstable than the devolution that we currently have. Devolution, since it began in 97, has been the most unstable political mechanism that we've ever had post-war. So what's settled about it? You should simply replace the word settlement with the word instability. A new vision and new instability. A revised UK constitutional instability. That would make more sense. So using the word settlement is just baloney. Let's also look though at his claim that he wants this so-called settlement instability essentially to be more like a federal union does he really think that if 
our relationship in the United Kingdom was more like a federal union, that that would somehow help to glue the United Kingdom together. Consider if we were already a federal state, that is to say Scotland, England, Northern Ireland and Wales all had our own parliaments and to all intents and purposes were largely separate countries that were held together loosely by one British Parliament which dealt only with defence, foreign affairs and the economy. The three most contentious political issues that there are. So no danger there of any fallout is there. Anyway, presume that we were already a federal state and at the 23rd of June we had been a federal state. Well, Scotland's vote to remain would have enabled Scotland fairly legitimately to say, well, sorry, we don't agree with the direction of this federation. Scotland voted considerably differently from England, so Scotland is going to break away and it's going to become separate. And if we had already been a federal state, then Scotland would have had many of the tools to indeed do that straight away, and certainly to hold a referendum straight away. The only reason that did not happen is because we're not a federal state. We are not actually, regardless of what Labour and Tory parties say, we're not just this union of nations. We are actually a nation of unions. We are one unitary state. And that's such an important point. The United Kingdom is a unitary state. It is a nation of unions. Unions which have been built up through the centuries. The coming together of tribes, then the coming together of kingdoms in England and in Scotland, and then the coming together of England and Wales, and then the coming together of the monarchies of Scotland and England and then the Parliamentary Union of 1707, and then the Union with Ireland. The United Kingdom has been on a march through time to unify itself. And we don't have perfect unity yet, not by a long shot, but if we go down this federal path, that's taking us down the route of breaking us up even further, and that's breaking the, the, the dream and the, the direction towards ultimate union in the future. So federalism makes it easier to break up the United Kingdom. It doesn't glue it in any way. So that what Alex Rowley is saying there, he's correct when he says we should concentrate on Brexit and not be distracted by independence, but he's entirely wrong when he introduces into that clear thought all that muddy thinking about federalism and home rule, which will in fact compromise his goal and which will make separation an awful lot easier for the nationalists. Okay, that's all I want to talk about in this particular broadcast. If you like what we're saying here, if you think this regular news roundup has got potential, then please support us so we can continue to deliver to you weekly, or rather I should say strongly. But our intention certainly is to do a broadcast at least once a week, but we can only do it with your help. So what can you do? You can subscribe by hitting the red button down there. We want to get tens of thousands of subscribers because if there is another referendum, our voice needs to be heard Scotland-wide, Britain-wide, indeed worldwide. Please donate to us via the PayPal link in the show more box down below. We can't do this on fresh air and donating to us is a way that you can show us that you value what we do, that you value our work. Please follow us on Facebook, that's facebook.com UK, a force for good. A lot of good articles going up there daily and also Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash UK, a force for good. A lot of funny memes and things like that, which we put out on Twitter every day. And check out also our website, a force for good .org .uk, where you can sign up to our fortnightly email update. Now, enough 
if enough of you do enough of that, then you will see us next week. My name's Alistair McConaughey, and this has been a Force for Good production. Thank <laughs> you.